My name is Jen Ashkowitz. I am a Korean-born adoptee. I was born in South Korea at um, April 28th, 1986. Um, I was adopted to a f- my family uh, in New York. I grew up on Long Island. Um, I am an actor. started acting when I was three. Um, most well-known for Glee and most recently Waitress on Broadway. And... Uh, I live in New York now. My family's here still, same house where I grew up, and um, that's the gist of it. The more I kind of have learned through, you know, for uh, creating Kindred and, you know, uh, having more adoptee friends now, I actually had a really great experience growing up. Um, I was always told that I was my parents' gift um, and that, uh, I have an older brother, he's nine years older and, uh, they were just like the most supportive and welcoming family. Um, I grew up in a pretty diverse town as well. Um, and a pretty diverse school, I guess. Um, and adopting, uh, adoption was kind of like, uh, what made me special in a way. And, um, it was a very, like, I, I had a very positive light shown on my, my, uh, childhood and growing up um, in that kind of world. Not that I didn't go through sort of like that question of like, um, why don't you look like your parents? Mm. Um, but my brother's from my mom's first marriage. And so he's part Puerto Rican. So he doesn't fully look like my parents either. Hmm. So it was kind of like, it was, you know, to my personal life and what we try to do with Kindred, Kindred is that, you know, family is extendable beyond DNA and beyond blood. It's uh, who you bring into your life. So I've sort of taken that with me as well. You know, Love the Children was the agency that I was adopted through. It doesn't exist anymore, but um, uh, they used to do events. Uh, I don't want to say like monthly or, you know, to celebrate the new year, we would do things. And, um, my first birthday, they did the Korean tradition where they put out the plates and you let the baby go. And whichever one they goes it goes to is like, what predicts your future of like what the, what your future is going to be filled with. I didn't really, t- we didn't talk about it. It was just part of who I was. Hmm. Um, And that kind of went away as I got older and obviously in high school and things, you know, um, we didn't really keep that tradition going. Mm -hmm. So um, that was it until like very recently that I got back into the, um, like connected to the adoption community. Yeah, so my best friend Sam, um, we grew up auditioning together. She was from Jersey and I was from Long Island. And so we would be in the same auditions all the time. And um, we didn't really, really know each other, but... I moved to LA and right when she found out about her sister and she decided to make the documentary, um, she reached out to me thinking like, I need another, another executive producer and I would like to keep it in the adoption family. Um, somebody who understands our story, somebody who understands what this would be like, um, to keep the integrity of, you know, that as a producer, which can Mm -hmm. sort of get, get lost in Hollywood like that. So uh, it was, it was really that, that when I went, oh my gosh, like this is just a whole different world that I never thought was possible at all. And so through Twinsters and through the Kickstarters and through connecting with adoptees and identifying as an adoptee as well, um, we started to realize that there was a real need for, um, positive influences uh, of mm-hmm. adoptees, um, and giving a and shedding a positive light on on the experience and sharing our stories. So that was really what inspired me was really learning like all these adoptee stories are are so different and so uh, specific, and none is right or wrong. It's just what it is. It's mm. your story, um, and that was like the biggest uh, inspiration for me was Sam and. Um, the possibilities and the and connecting with other adoptees. You know, there's a lot of organizations to help families adopt. Um, you know, and and to help pay for those fees. There's a lot of um, there's not a lot of organizations that help the actual adoptee. Hmm. Um, that I found, I didn't have that growing up, or I wasn't aware of it growing up. Um, 
you know, connect a kid. Now we've learned they have a mentoring program and, you know, there are amazing organizations and not that we were trying to reinvent the wheel by any means, but, um, we definitely saw a need for, um, the opportunity for adoptees to get involved, for adoptees to identify, for adoptees to tell their story, um, for adoptees to look out for emotional support really is, is what we were aiming to do originally um, when we started Kindred. And we were like, we kind of hit the ground running before we realized what was actually happening. Like we got, <laughs> we became a nonprofit and we we're like, okay, what do we do now? <laughs> and all these adoptees and like influxes of uh, just in their inbox of the Kindred email of just kids going, I want to, I want to be involved. I want to help. I want to talk. I want to share my story. Um, what can I do? Yeah, so Kindred right now is actually, um, it was on a short hiatus, and um, that's just because, again, it was just Sam and I, for, you know, like, from the ground up, creating this whole foundation. Um, really, realistically, our, our aim and our mission was to um, support the greater adoption community. We were not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're not trying to step on anybody else's toes. Um, really, we just wanted to find a niche of like being the first stop shop for adoptees to go. I need, I need funds to help me go, um, meet my family. I don't know where to start. I've never said I've been adopted before to anybody. Um, and so realistically, we wanted to sort of be this blanket uh, for the community too. And now we're kind of reworking our mission a little bit and, uh, focusing in a little bit more on like something a bit more specific. We haven't really gotten there just yet, but, um, uh, what we've been so far has been emotionally supportive for adoptees around the world. Um, you know, like our biggest uh, sort of goal when we began this or our biggest mission was to create a hotline sort of uh, based off of what we saw working at the Trevor Project was the 24-hour hotline. Yeah, I mean, wow, nobody's really ever asked me that before. Um, for adoptees, I would say no, nothing is wrong. Nothing is um, bad. It's just different. Everybody's story is different. And so that to me goes, then it, it's, everything's acceptable. Everything is okay. Mm. Um, you're not alone, obviously. Um, and for the, uh, for the community, for parents, I think, uh, you know, I'm not, but I, I have adopted parents and they've been the most supportive. Mm. If, you know, up until, uh, I want to say uh, two years ago, I had never wanted to meet my birth parents. And, and I still don't know if I want to, but what I've learned is like, I told my dad, Hey, did you have any more, any more information than what you've already shown me? And he said, actually I had this form from, uh, Eastern, which is the adoption community that I was, uh, from Korea. And the organization that I was adopted from. And, um, you know, I said, he said, why? And I said, I just, I don't know. I've kind of found this new interest in possibly looking for my parents, possibly who knows. Mm. Um, and it was the first time they'd ever really heard that from me. And it was, they were like, okay, whatever makes you happy, whatever you need to do. Um, so I definitely think that there's, something that to say about the supportiveness of, uh, the fear we have of hurting them, our parents. Right. Cause my fear is I, I don't want to hurt them. They've given me my entire life. So, yeah. um, I think don't let that fear overcome what could be a, a, a new chapter for your, you know, your child. And, you know, if there are places to go to speak to other parents, if, if that's the case, because I think that is definitely a really important part of, um, just being open to all the opportunities and all the, all the, um, possibilities that could come along. Sam and I both say, actually, and I learned this from her, she said, some days I'm ready to meet her and some days I'm not. Mm. Um, and that's me as well right now. And, you know, we have to be very careful when we look up our parents and do that, begin that search, because sometimes they'll go as far as saying we found her, we've contacted her without even you asking for that. Right. So um, there's definitely a lot of things that I think about when I, if I were to meet my mother, if she's alive, because kind of in my head, she's passed away. Um, and I don't know if that's my own way of, you know, settling with 
that part of my life. Um, but I don't know, who knows? I just, if she was alive and she did want to meet me and did want to know where I was in my life, what it's not just the day that you meet them. It's every day after that, that I've opened up that box and chosen that to pursue that relationship. And I'm not sure I'm ready to do that. I mean, I don't even know if I want to do that with half, you know, some of my friends, you know, (laughs) like it's just a, it's a really big thing. It's bigger than, um, some, would imagine and would expect. Yeah. I, I think, um, I kind of, I'm kind of okay with it. I don't, and I don't know. I, I kind of come to peace with it. I've kind of, um, because there was never something that I felt was missing. So for a lot of people, when they go and they look, it's because they say, this is going to be, this is going to be fulfilled when I find them. And a lot of the times it's not, but, mm. um, if you have to do that, if that's your journey, then you know, by all means, if you're brave enough to go ahead and take that leap, uh, you know, that's what we're here for. But I'm just, uh, yeah, I don't, it's not the place where I kind of want to do that. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm kind of okay with it. (laughs) (laughs) The most that I've learned from is, um, speaking to other adoptees, speaking to older adoptees, speaking to younger adoptees. And, um, again, like uh, to me, a book on adoption is not really helpful. (laughs) Right. I I, I mean, who knows? Like if, you know, one came along, but to me, it's the experience of the stories of that kind of really, um, resonate with, uh, what I want to take and what I want to learn from. Oh my goodness. Hank, um, Jessica Stam actually, um, connected Hank and Adapt together, um, with Kindred and Sam and I, because we were working on our first event. And, um, as Kindred was sort of finally being, it was finalized to start a, like really, um, the hit to, for us to hit the ground running, excuse me. Um, it was right around world adoption day. I don't remember if it was the first one, I think it was the first one two years ago. It probably was, yeah. Yeah. 20, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we sort of met him right before they launched um, World Adoption Day. Got it. Um, and we realized that Hank was, you know, sort of the the engine behind that, which we, <laughs> we loved. And yeah. Hank was amazing. So we met with Hank, Sam and I, and he gave us such great advice and, you know, and a kind of uh, told us his incredible story. Yeah. So we were, we've just kept in touch with him. We honored him at our gala, uh, in April of 2016. And then we, uh, came to the baby ball, uh, this past year. Nice. And yeah, we love what, we love what he does and what he stands for and the human that he is. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I do appreciate the, I, I just, I love supporting the community. Mm. Yeah, um, actually, on our website, you can you can contact us and email if you want to volunteer. Um, if you have any questions, it goes right to our inboxes, so we answer them oh, nice. as, as much as we can. <laughs> uh, but again, we're in the reworkings of everything right now. But there's a site, you know, there's obviously a site, uh, a place to donate on the site as well. And um, yeah, we're just refocusing to a place where we go. We want to. Uh, allow people to see where their money is going and we want Mm. them to understand exactly what we are doing. And that was kind of like one of our biggest mistakes was just like this blanket of, you know, donate, 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 help adoptees. But so the, you know, the place we're reworking right now, but yeah, you can, you can go on kindred uh, adoption.org. Ted, you know, everybody's story is different. Everybody's, um, and they're all so special. And I think that's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to see the positive side of things as well. Mm. So, um, we try and do that as much as we can and help people see that. And that's it. 